This is Five on Your Side at Noon, focused on you. And we begin with breaking news at noon. Mitch McConnell will step down as Senate Republican leader in November. The Kentucky Republican turned 82 last week. McConnell says he still plans to serve out his term, which ends in January of 2027. McConnell is the longest serving Senate caucus leader in history. From summer to winter in 24 hours, St. Louis saw a record high temperature of 86 yesterday, and then the bottom fell out. Check this out snow in downtown St. Louis this morning. Temperatures won't even get out of the 40s today. Thanks for being here at noon. I'm Kay Quinn and after tomorrow, spring returns. All this in the course of one week. Meteorologist Jim Anthony Slaughter in for Jim Castillo. He has the weather first forecast. Oh yeah, we had it all in just a course of 24 hours. As you mentioned, 86 was the high yesterday. Not only Kay was that the record high for that particular day, that was the highest temperature we've ever had in February in St. Louis on record. Yeah, history going down uh, there this morning. <laughs> well, the temperatures went down to 28 and that was a good 58 degree drop in just about 12 hours. So here we are behind the front. Now the colder air is in place. The gusty winds are as well. The showers, storms, the snow, all of that has moved away from us this afternoon. So we will go into the next couple of hours as we go towards our high temperature. Well, it's going to feel cold because our winds are still gusting uh, 30 to 45 miles per hour all across the area. This will be the trend through the evening, and that means again these temperatures that are trying to climb up near 40. It's still going to feel like it's near freezing this afternoon. 37 right now over in Belleville, one of our warmer spots, but still 28 degrees right now in Pittsfield. So a cold day to say the least. We will have sunshine today and K we move into March with warmer temperatures. We'll take a look at the extended forecast in just a few minutes. All right, we'll see you then. Thank you, Anthony. Take a look at the damage in Chicago. Severe thunderstorms caused large hail and several tornadoes last night. The National Weather Service confirms four tornadoes touched down in the Chicago area. A fifth hit western Illinois. There were no reports of any injuries. Also developing at noon, a massive business fire in Valley Park. We're told it took 60 firefighters from 12 departments to get that fire under control overnight. Five on your side's Diamond Palmer is live outside Elite Properties and Landscape Construction. That's on Marshall Road. What made the fire so hard to fight, Diamond? Well, okay, fire crews tell us the biggest challenge in fighting this fire was the wind, and they told us about an hour ago that's when they finally put out the fire in its entirety. Now I'm going to step out of the way so everyone can see what's behind me. As you can see, the scene has cleared uh, as for the firefighters on this scene, but now you can see employees showing up to part of this building uh, not being there now. Valley Park Fire Department says they had no choice but to tear down some of the building in order to attack this fire. We're going to show you some video we captured overnight showing how thick the smoke was and how fast the flames took over elite properties and landscaping. Now neighbors say they heard a huge explosion around 3 a.m. and 12 fire departments and 60 firefighters were on scene on the fire Wednesday morning. The building was unoccupied when the fire broke out. But fire officials say unknown materials inside the building were burning, but none of the materials were toxic. Wind-driven fires are um, a massive spreader of fires. It, it really contributes to the fire. Um, it um, makes it move a lot faster and it intensifies it. Um, just creates a lot of, lot of hazards for us. It's uh, very difficult to fight against that. Now again, as you can hear behind me, there are employees and crews continuing to work on this building, even employees trying to go inside of that building and gather any documents to salvage them. St. Louis County Bomb and Arson Division is investigating the cause of this fire. Reporting live here in Valley Park, Diamond Palmer, five on your side. All right, thank you, Diamond. An Afton family is homeless today after a fire destroyed their home. Crews were called to the house on Staley Avenue overnight. We're told the family of five got out safely. Investigators say the fire started in one of the children's bedrooms and spread from there. They're still trying to find out how it started. No one was injured. New at noon, two women are in jail today, charged with sex trafficking in St. Louis County. Prosecutors charged Angel, Angel Henderson of Florissant, seen here, and Mac Mitchell of Memphis, 
That person is not yet in custody. They're accused of recruiting and transporting a 16-year-old to participate in sex acts at River City Casino. No other details are being released about the investigation or what led to their arrests. It appears the busing situation is getting better at the St. Louis Public School District. A spokesperson for the district says it had a total of 18 uncovered routes today, which is close to normal. Bus drivers with Missouri Central protested the last two days by calling in sick. They're upset with the way the company handled a racial issue. Five on Your Side spoke with a mechanic of the company who claims he's endured racial slurs and harassment for two months now. The company hired an independent third party to investigate. About 60 of the district's bus routes went uncovered yesterday. The man police say is responsible for a crash that killed a mother and daughter is now on house arrest. Monty Henderson appeared in court yesterday where a judge also ordered him to surrender his driver's license. Earlier this month, a different judge allowed Henderson to post a $20,000 bond without any conditions. Video of that crash is now circulating on social media and Five on Your Side has decided to share some of the video, but we are not showing the moment of impact. That video shows Henderson's car speeding through the intersection at 18th and Olive. Police say he was driving 70 miles an hour on February 14th when he clipped another car and then hit Leticia Bracero and Alyssa Cordova. The mother and daughter were visiting from Chicago to attend the Drake concert at Enterprise Center they will be laid to rest this weekend. Hundreds of dollars could soon be given to people who've been incarcerated in Ferguson. A civil rights group accuses the city of throwing people in jail to make money. A court granted preliminary approval for a settlement to move forward. Five on Your Side's Brent Solomon shows us who could be owed. The local protests following the death of Michael Brown not only giving people a chance to be heard, it also prompted action. It's thousands of people who Ferguson put in jail. The Arch City defenders filed suit against seven localities in our region, including Ferguson. The group says it all started with some sort of minor ticket um, and then it snowballed where you know, there were fees they couldn't afford, there were fines they couldn't afford, then they were getting additional fines because they, they you know, didn't come back to court, they were getting locked up, then there would be, they would have to pay bond to get out of the jail. If you had $500, you could walk out the door, and if you didn't fi have $500, you had to sit there in prison, and we think that was unconstitutional. All of the localities settled. The court just gave preliminary approval to accept the last settlement to the tune of $4.5 million with Ferguson. If you are a person that remembers sitting in the Ferguson jail because you didn't, because they were holding you there. Um, maybe you're sitting there because you couldn't pay your bond, or maybe you were sitting there, you know, until they released you. Uh, you are eligible for money from this settlement. I asked city leaders here, can Ferguson afford this settlement? And might some city services be impacted as a result? A spokesperson telling me they're not commenting just yet until the court finally approves the settlement. In Ferguson, Brent Solomon, five on your side. Anyone who had been held by Ferguson from February of 2010 to December of 2022 is asked to get in contact with the administrator handling the settlement. We've placed a link for you on KSDK.com. Each person's payout will be based on how many hours they spent in jail. Still ahead, the reason Toyota is recalling thousands of pickup trucks. Plus, a badly organized event for kids or a straight up scam? what parents and kids actually got after paying for a Willy Wonka-like experience.